Good evening, friends out there. It's actually a very cool evening here. I hope you're having a pleasant day. Today, we're going to be talking about contraception. Uh, what does contraception mean? It's simply put, preventing a pregnancy. I mean, with the COVID-19 lockdown, there's a whole lot of uh, noise and expectation out there that post-COVID-19 lockdown, there's going to be a baby boom nine months after because many spouses who haven't had this kind of uh, opportunity or pleasure of spending a, a long elongated period together at home because of the lockdown they've been together at home for long periods extended periods so they're likely to have a baby now with this information we're going to provide today we're hoping that if we apply this information if we're guided by this information and we do the right thing we can avoid having an unexpected or an unplanned baby uh, before I get into discussing uh, contraception in detail, let me share an experience I had with you. After I had my first child, I was all geared up to go back to school for my master's degree. And whilst I was preparing for the examination, I felt ill, you know, dizziness, uh, laziness, feverish in the morning and all of those. Uh, and I treated malaria and it didn't go away. So I had to go seek um, a doctor's advice. My doctor advised I have a pregnancy test. I mean, I just thought that was unnecessary because as far as I was concerned, I couldn't have been pregnant. But he insisted and I went for the test and lo and behold, I was pregnant. Now, why did this happen? It happened because I believed in one of the myths that flies around there that whilst you're lactating, whilst you're breastfeeding, you can't get pregnant. You know, even though I had a background in biology, my first degree was in the biological sciences and I should have known better. But sometimes it's very easy to believe what people say and probably what has worked for one person and you think it will work for you. Now, this is a, a word of uh, warning probably out there. That the human anatomy as it is, in spite of our generalities, there's so many uniqueness. So that everybody is a unique <laughs> individual. And because of our individual differences, what works for one person may not work for you. So instead of taking chances, I mean, you don't want to deal with an unplanned for pregnancy. Instead of taking chances, if you've had a baby, you don't want to have another one, go see your gynecologist and get a contraceptive method that will work for you and use it. Now, besides that myth, there are others, but let's just look at the whole thing. When and who can be pregnant? For a girl, as soon as you start seeing your first menstrual menstruation, that's when menarche occurs, you can get pregnant. And these days from nine years old, from about nine years old, nine to 14, 14 girls get their first menstrual period earlier than in the past. Now this does not mean that because you can get pregnant, you can actually carry a baby to full term and deliver successfully. That's a mistake we make. And that's what is wrong with all of the child marriages there. One of what is wrong actually, there are other reasons why children shouldn't get married. But one of it is that they're not even ready. A girl who is nine, 10, 14, 15, is menstruating and can get pregnant may not be in fact is not physically developed enough to carry that pregnancy to full term and have the baby successfully her pelvis is not publicly developed so she can have a fistula during uh, uh delivery she can develop an obstetric fistula so please let the young girls go to school let them give them a life give them an education and don't force children into marriages that's so unnecessary and for the men too for the boys too from when sperm key occurs that's the first uh, discharge of sperm during wet dreams you know you can also pregnant a lady but that does not mean that you're ready to become a father so stay away from sex this video I'm actually making for married couples out there who need to uh, plan their family, you know, family size and keep down their family size. Not for young girls and boys. Sex should be reserved for marriage. At least that's my personal belief as a Christian. I believe that sex outside marriage is sin. Besides, the sex thing is overrated. I mean, sex should be a uh, means to an end, not an end of its own. But to so many people, sex is an end. And their everyday activity, talk, wake up, sleep, is controlled by sex and they're getting crazy over sex. I don't think that is right. Now back to our contraception gist. Now another myth also that people you believe that is that when once you've not recovered from lactating and menorrhea, that means when you're breastfeeding, you just put to bed and your menstrual cycle has not returned, you cannot get pregnant. These two may not be exactly correct for everyone. Uh, this is because before the menstrual cycle returns, you must have ovulated. And if you do nothing and you just wait for the menstrual cycle, whilst you're waiting, you just wake up one day and find yourself pregnant. So please don't take the chances. Do what you have to do. Another myth uh, about pregnancy is doubting, the doubting washing of the vagina that ladies usually do. 
many women believe that if they can get out of uh, sex as fast as they can and go wash their vagina, they can avoid getting pregnant. This is not true because the sperm cells are usually emptied during ejaculation to the tip, the neck of the, the, the opening of the womb, the cervix, and maybe they are emptied because the sperm cells are mortal. They'll quickly swim into the cervix before you go do your washing, and so you will get pregnant. That's not a good method. Another method that is actually a contraceptive method but not quite effective is the coitus interruptus, and that's the withdrawal method. That's taking the penis out of the vagina before ejaculation. Now, this method could work for some, but it's not 100% effective. I mean, no method is, but it's about 70-something percent effective. This is because before the man withdraws the penis, there's a likelihood that the first part of uh, the sperm cells, the ejaculation, which actually carries the most amount of sperm cells, would have been done and into the vagina before the withdrawal. And it takes a lot of self-control to withdraw at the right time, so it's not something you will want to rely on. Now, talking about men and contraception, I mean, in Africa, I, I don't know why, but it seems like Everyone thinks contraception is a women's affair. Why should that be? I mean, marriage, sex, is a partnership between the man and the woman. So, contraception should be also an issue that will be discussed between the man and the woman, not left for the woman alone to handle. I mean, we handle a lot with um, pregnancy, labor, delivery. So, if the man is helping out with contraception, that won't be bad. Look at the example of the Ugandan lady, uh, Miriam Nabatanzi, who had 44 children, you know, for one man. And uh, she had a rare genetic condition that uh, leads to hyperovulation. And she was told that if she tried any contraception method, she was going to die. And then this man had a chance of helping her out, at least with the, the smallest one, using the condom. He didn't do that. He didn't go for any other method of contraception. He led this woman to have 44 children and abandoned her to take care of these children alone. Come on. That doesn't speak well of us. That's so... Uh, inhuman to say the least men should be able to uh, help their women and uh, they should also be able to take the responsibility of contraception if need be so what are the male contraceptive methods available out there we al already talked about uh, coitus interruptus there's the male condom that's the most simple the most common method out there you buy a condom off the shelf and use it and it has over 90 percent effectiveness so if you know you i mean you could use a male condom to, to avoid pregnancy. Your partner could use a condom if you do not want to get pregnant. But when using the condom, be careful, be sure to use, to make sure that the condom is not expired and that it's a latex condom. And also make sure you use it properly. That is to say, whilst you're uh, inserting the condom, whilst you're using the condom, make sure you don't put a hole with your fingers or something. Make sure you don't trap any air bubbles because that could lead to it bursting. And also when you're taking it off, take it off carefully to avoid any spillage of the sperm cells. Now, the third method is the vasectomy. It's a simple surgery. It takes about 10 minutes or, or a little more, and uh, usually with little or no risks, where the vast difference in the man is actually a uh, cut. The vast difference is the duct, part of the duct that takes the sperm cells from where they are produced in the testes all the way to where they get matured in the prostate before they are ejaculated. So when you cut the vast difference, the sperm cells will be produced by the testes, but they cannot reach uh, the prostate and they cannot be ejaculated. Now, this is very, very different from castration where the testes are taken off. When you have a vasectomy, it does not make you less masculine. You know, there's no, it, it does not make you desire sex or enjoy sex less. If anything, you enjoy sex more because, you know, there's no risk of pregnancy. So that, those are one of the methods that a man can use to help out. I mean, like I said, it's a partnership. Now, there are also other methods that have to do with cooperation between the man and the woman. Uh, these methods are usually called natural methods. Now, a note of warning. If you are going to choose the natural methods, one of them, be sure that you have a very regular menstrual cycle. Otherwise, your chances of you know having it being effective for you are very low. We're going to discuss quickly a number of these natural methods. One of them is um, abstaining periodically. Now, this is if you master your period very well and you know your date of ovulation. Usually, the egg, the ovum from the woman, has a lifespan of two days. And then the sperm cell has a, life, a lifespan of four days. So if you're able to avoid uh, sex like four days before your ovulation and about four days after your ovulation, it means you're safe. So you can go with that method. But like I said, again, you must have a very regular cycle and then you must be very careful to make sure that you get your ovulation date right. Another one is the temperature method. That is the woman has to check her temperature every morning before she gets out of bed 
when once she wakes up before she takes any fluid or any drinks. Now, this is based on the physiology of the body that at the time of ovulation, the temperature of the body rises slightly. So if you're checking your temperature every day, vaginal or rectal temperature, there'll be a slight rise. But like we said, you have to be motivated to do that and be careful not to make any mistakes. So if you can get the temperature meter and know exactly when you're ovulating, you can avoid sex three days after the temperature has risen or three, four days before you know the temperature rises as well you must do this regularly keep a chart of the temperature rises so you can know when ov ovulation occurs these methods are not as reliable as the other methods we'll be discussing in the next video the other one is the mucus method the mucus method now before um, after your menstruation your vagina will be very dry but as ovulation approaches you will have a discharge that is sticky that is whitish you know from your vagina but when it gets very close to ovulation period the nature of the discharge will change so you have a clear discharge that can stretch without breaking you know so if you can study this the peak of that colorless a stretchy discharge is the day of ovulation if you can master this method very well like we said again avoid sex before and after ovulation for this before for this after for safety reasons then you can be safe but all of these natural methods uh leaves too much room for error so there are other more reliable methods but we, we will be discussing these methods in the next video i don't want to overload you with information i hope that this information has been useful i hope that our men out there are challenged to begin to help their women out with this at least talk to your woman at least give her, your wife some support now like i said there's a whole lot of information that will be coming out to you here let us know what you want us to talk about. Leave your comments after watching the video. Um, if you want to ask questions, you could ask, or you could go check us out on our Facebook page at The Psychologist NG, on Instagram at The Psychologist NG. Leave your comments, leave your uh, questions, and we'll make sure we answer all your questions and we discuss the topics you want to hear discussed. Now, that'll be all for today. Have yourself a pleasant night rest out there, and I see you in the next video.